Hello, everyone. My name is Juan, uh, and I'm here to talk to you about Filecoin scaling and the FDM. I wish I could be there with you today. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, uh, but I'll be there in Hong Kong starting tomorrow. All right, let's get started. Uh, Web3 brings trust to internet interactions, uh, and we want to make all of our transactions online verifiable through uh, using cryptography and uh, cryptoeconomic rules. Uh, but in order to uh, and empower all of our applications, Web3 needs to be able to scale to handle the level of transactions that most applications um, do. And today, that's just simply not the case. Blockchains uh, have way too um, are way too small uh, to be able to handle the kinds of um, operations that most applications online um, do. So we're tackling that in Falcon by creating a massive scale storage network that can truly scale to the needs um, of these kinds of applications. And to build a and by building a compute network on top, and that's where uh, FEM is really critical. So the Falcon Master Plan is divided into three parts. Step one is to build the world's largest decentralized storage network. Step two is to onboard and safeguard humanity's data on that network. And step three is to bring computation to the data uh, to enable those massive scale uh, applications. Now, step one, uh, we've already accomplished. Uh, we have already the world's largest decentralized storage network. Uh, there's about 3,800 storage providers uh, around the world in 44 countries, uh, providing about 13 exabytes of capacity, which is truly an, an astonishing um, scale of, of a network. This is already rivaling um, massive scale centralized uh, storage networks. Uh, the, the network is um, a professional. Uh, it has uh, hardware and, and service providers that um, are operating a storage, facili storage facilities similar to the ones that you have in centralized cloud providers. So this is not just, uh, you know, kind of like um, random uh, small computers and so on. It's really um, a professional network to be able to handle uh, professional scale uh, applications. Uh, it's also uh, becoming one of the greenest storage networks on the planet uh, because we're uh, through the Falcon Green program, we're able to uh, connect the uh, energy use of the Falcon network to um, renewable energy uh, through new renewable energy markets, which is an amazing application of, uh, of blockchain systems as well. Now, step two, uh, this is where uh, we're focusing a lot of our efforts today, is, is to onboard and safeguard humanity's data. Um, I'm going to be focusing on step three, the computation layer in this talk, uh, but I'll touch on this a little bit just so you get a sense of um, how the network is growing. Uh, so last time I spoke um, uh, at, at one thing event uh, was in uh, in September, I think, uh, 20 or so last year. Uh, and since then, uh, the network has grown an enormous amount uh, in terms of the uh, data onboarding. Uh, we now have about 765 petabytes of data. That's 4x since uh, in just in the last six months or so. Um, and the on data onboarding per day is at, at a four to five petabytes um, uh, uh, scale. Uh, so we're, we're talking about a 3x increase since, since then, and it continues to grow. So uh, and we'd love to check in with this graph the next time in, in the next uh, uh, conversation to just see how big the network is. Uh, and so this is uh, astonishingly big compared to anything else in the in the crypto ecosystem. We're talking about many orders of magnitude larger than um, all other decentralized storage networks um, and applications that are uh, way larger than than everything else. Uh, about fourteen uh, hundred clients, uh, so a thousand four hundred clients are uploading all of this data to Falcoin. About twenty three percent of them upload more than one hundred terabytes. So these are pretty serious uh, operations, large applications with lots of different lots of data. Uh, in addition to, of course, like handling you know thousands of small small applications. Now the data is being onboarded into Filecoin through uh, a set of use case specific on ramps that help onboard data uh, in think, uh, that are targeted towards specific applications, and of course the Filecoin Plus crypto economic uh, mechanism, which enables a much better uh, cost structure than the centralized cloud. So Falcon Plus is a really critical component of making Falcon um, uh, be competitive uh, relative to the centralized cloud. Um, so the uh, there's about there's tons of um, users uh, using uh, Falcon through onboarding on ramps like Web3 dot storage, uh, which is one single application targeted to, towards um, small applications. And since the last time that we checked in, which uh, we had about you know twenty thousand users, now we have fifty thousand users. Um, so it's more than doubled uh, since the last time we talked, um, and we now have you know close to 100 million uploads um, in uh, in the network, which is in, in through this uh, through this on which is huge. Um, NFT storage, which, which had about 57,000 users last time we talked, now has 128,000. So again, uh, more than doubled. 
uh, and we went from 89,000 um, up uploads to now over 100, sorry, 89 million application uh, NFTs to now over 120 million. So this is really an, a, a, a huge growth rate uh, for, for these on ramps. Uh, there's all kinds of specific applications uh, in you know, different productivity, games, video, music, social networks, and so on, um, that are starting to use uh, uh, the platform network to be able to uh, back up and, and serve um, all of the data in their applications. And there's hundreds of, of large data sets uh, stored in the network. Uh, and you can think of massive scale uh, scientific projects, um, like major experiments uh, in the world are now um, choosing to use Filecoin to back up uh, their data. And also several cities are starting to use um, the Filecoin network to, uh, to archive their data or make it usable, uh, make it accessible to lots of uh, researchers and, and um, consumers of, of data. So um, a lot of these users uh, come to Filecoin because of the strong uh, verifiability that we get thanks to the proofs of, of replication that Pathman offers. Um, the kind of tamper-proof log that, that shows that storage providers have been storing that data um, and where that, that data has been stored. Um, and they also are looking forward to the computation capabilities uh, that Pathman is going to enable with FBM uh, and more. Uh, the onboarding uh, is also assisted by new kinds of economic structures um, that enable new ways of, of, bringing, of, of composing uh, search primitives. So um, this is a, a BD is a storage platform um, that uses an auction mechanism to be able to connect clients to the best um, possible deals uh, from storage providers. Um, and this is uh, uh, enabling like very uh, interesting economic structures. So now um, the network is growing massively. Uh, there's an enormous amount of data. Now let's bring computation to that data. And that's uh, what the, a lot of the network has been focused on. We just had a huge release uh, about a month ago uh, of the FEM. So what's FEM? Uh, FEM is a, a component that brings computation to the Falcon network. So this adds uh, smart, contract, smart contract capabilities. And on top of that, we're gonna layer other things like com computer or data networks, uh, applications, and so on. Uh, the FEM project um, is now used by a ton of different uh, applications and builders uh, in the community uh, to run their applications. So I'll go through those uh, in a moment. Um, and just diving into the technical details of FEM. Uh, so it is a, a runtime based on WebAssembly. So at the very core, uh, FEM has a, a WebAssembly um, uh, uh, hypervisor uh, and it's built to support many different runtimes. So you can plug in the EVM you can use other Wasm runtimes from other blockchains that use Wasm. You can use um, uh, SES, which is a version of JavaScript. Uh, you can mount LVM, IR, and so on. So it's built as a, as a multi-VM uh, platform to enable interoperability across the entire blockchain space um, and to many other kinds of uh, operations. So you can think of it as a, as a blockchain that is meant to connect to lots of other networks. Now, um, FEM is launching uh, launched with Ethereum compatibility as the first uh, runtime. Uh, and so that means that you can run uh, EVM uh, smart contracts uh, and you have full Ethereum address support, uh, Ethereum account support, uh, and so on. Uh, so you can connect uh, the uh, FEM, FEVM runtime uh, to any other EVM compatible runtime. Uh, the uh, you know, the EVM runtime Falcon has all the you know standard uh, things that you might expect from from other EVM runtimes. Um, it is uh, compatible with with uh, the other networks, um, and it also includes some uh, specific Falcon uh, system calls that en that enable Falcon specific functionality. So think of being able to issue smart uh, uh, smart contract calls to um, be able to store data in the network um, or to uh, check ver uh, proofs uh, and so on. So you have all of the operations that are native to Falcon. Um, accessible through uh, FEM system calls. And um, the gas accounting is following sort of the, the Falcon rules. So, it, so it's a slightly different um, um, uh, gas model, but it follows EAP 1559 and, and, and so on. Now, uh, FEM enables a ton of applications uh, to be built on Falcon that are just not possible in other, um, in other blockchains and certainly not possible in other uh, storage networks. So think of bringing the, the possibilities of smart contracts um, with the ability to issue uh, storage operations for large amounts of storage, uh, and then being able to issue computation over that, that data. Uh, so, so think of being able to uh, create applications that uh, can check uh, whether something has been stored or um, issue contracts uh, for certain uh, kinds of data uh, and so on. 
uh, like I mentioned, there's a, a huge community of builders. Uh, there's also uh, a set of programs that support uh, early stage builders uh, called the FEM Foundry. Uh, and there's been a ton of hackathons already uh, that lots of, um, you know, thousands of, um, of people have been uh, playing around with FEM uh, and building building projects for. So uh, look out for the next one. I, I think it's uh, gonna be announced like relatively soon. So now I wanna dive into some of the specific things that people are building with FEM. Uh, so kind of what becomes possible. Uh, so one thing that uh, is uh, desperately needed in the ecosystem uh, is to be able to have a much better storage provider um, marketplaces for um, uh, for being able to lease Filecoin to be able to uh, uh, use it in terms of pledge collateral. Uh, and so there's already several um, uh, projects doing this. Uh, one of them is Glyph, uh, the Glyph staking pools enable um, that kind of uh, uh, connection between uh, Filecoin token holders and storage providers to be able to uh, connect um, the, the sort of the capital required uh, to fund uh, the storage provider operations. Uh, and so this is gonna be a, a, a hugely uh, uh, important component of the, of the platform ecosystem. Uh, there's also all the you know, other standard um, DeFi uh, style uh, operations that you, that you would want, everything from um, uh, uh, AMMs to um, other various different kind of um, um, loan structures and, and pools and, and all of the kind of DeFi power that people have come to expect from um, many other smart contract chains. And so FEM is designed to enable porting um, all of those uh, kinds of systems into uh, into Platform. Um, the FEM also enables uh, perpetual storage deals. So think of um, being able to um, now enable uh, not just kind of fixed uh, duration deals, which is the ba basic primitive of the Platform offers, but now being able to have perpetual um, uh, contracts, so being able to store uh, things for uh, for in perpetuity based on smart contract rules. So all of the deals are automatically renewed, uh, detecting uh, failures of certain source providers, and being able to replicate the data uh, and move it to other places. So all of this is, uh, people are uh, already building on on FBM. Uh, there's one uh, specific version of this, which is the uh, the permanent NFT storage uh, contracts. Um, so NFT of storage, which is a service that um, uh, that runs on on Pathway, uh, is now doing this for uh, all of the NFTs that that it stores. Uh, now, of course, you you also can connect FEM to other uh, networks like um, say Lit or Medusa or um, uh, other access control networks, uh, or being able to use um, zero knowledge computation platforms like uh, CK Lambda that the uh, Lurk um, Lurk Lab is making. So. Uh, think of being able to use uh, decentralized access controls and data privacy uh, in the computations. Now, people are also building uh, the retrieval market side of Filecoin. Uh, so think Filecoin Saturn is a, uh, a CDM project with now over uh, 1,300 um, uh, points of presence, which is a huge number um, of, of pops relative to many other CDMs in the, in the world. Um, and all the payouts uh, for and retrieval rewards for for Falcon Saturn are now um, going to be flowing through FDM. Uh, and later on, the, the entire model for how to measure the CDN itself and how to evaluate the contribution from parties and so on uh, will be done entirely through FDM, which will be a, a super cool, uh, super cool application. We're also seeing data DAOs, which is a, a use case that I find uh, super exciting. Um, communities are going to be able to collectively curate useful data and then govern and sell the data access to that data. Um, and then have a shared treasury for the preservation of that data and the growth of that data. So think of uh, communities of data, uh, of uh, communities of, of individuals or organizations that really care about some specific data sets, being able to pool their resources and work together to um, to both uh, safeguard and monetize that data. Uh, we're already seeing many um, applications starting to build these data DAOs, uh, and so look forward to see how they they grow over time. Um, one use case that I'm extremely excited about is the compute over data network. So this is uh, this is bringing large scale computation over Falcon data. So think think of being able to issue um, uh, compute jobs similar to how you would do it in uh, Amazon Lambda or or um, Easy Two or something like that, uh, but over your uh, over the Falcon data. Uh, with the Bacalao project is uh, spearheading this kind of computer or data network, and we're already seeing uh, lots of applications starting uh, over using Bacalao. Um, they've had you know hundreds of thousands of jobs. I think getting close to a million, uh, a million jobs, um, and and this is like super exciting to see um, this level of adoption on on kind of like what's a very early project and early network. 
Um, one of the example use cases that I find super exciting is um, using uh, machine learning models, uh, like generative AI models, uh, directly through um, the cloud and through FPM. So already there's um, applications where you can kind of uh, send a prompt, uh, get an image generated, and then be able to um, directly uh, store that image uh, on Cloudpoint and back it up long term, add it to perpetual storage, or like immediately mint an NFT and so on. So it's going to be the kind of the intersection of um, crypto and AI is going to be super super interesting to watch. Uh, now I I foresee that we're going to have many different compute networks uh, that um, uh, map to different parts of the kind of verifiability, privacy, and performance triangle. Uh, and so for each of these kind of spots in this triangle, we're going to see different uh, compute networks form. Um, and so we're tuning Cosmo to be a great layer one uh, network to support all of these other networks as L2s on top of it. Um, so uh, many different uh, compute networks are going to start uh, between this year and the next couple of years. Uh, they're going to be homing in, in Cloudflare. And through this, we can get to you know, massive scale data science to be able to do uh, large scale computation and data analysis and all of the, the types of um, work that people are used to in, in a normal centralized cloud with you know, uh, huge uh, clusters of compute, uh, compute jobs. Uh, that's the kind of um, uh, operation that we are uh, bringing to Cloudflare. And if we can do this right, we can then set up the right ground to be able to uh, handle um, the computation required by you know, the massive scale applications that, that run uh, most of the internet traffic uh, in, in the world today. So that's kind of like what we're, what we're targeting. Uh, so again, uh, join the community uh, of builders uh, in the network. This is a super exciting time to, uh, to be part of the network. Uh, it's very early days, like it's only been uh, one month and already we have all of these builders deploying their, their applications and systems uh, on the network. Um, like I mentioned before, there's a huge need for uh, lots of DeFi primitives, and those are getting started. Um, it's a, a kind of an interesting um, uh, note that in most blockchain networks, uh, some of the early early de groups that deploy to um, to a network become you know some of the uh, uh, long term um, uh, very successful DeFi protocols. So this is a great time to get started and deploy um, uh, basic uh, DeFi primitives uh, to to the Cloudflare network. Uh, and we also uh, make sure to check out all of the different um, uh, programs that, that are out there for builders. There's, uh, of course, hackathons and grants. There's thousands of hackers um, uh, using those. There's accelerators. Uh, so there's accelerator programs around the Cloudplain uh, community. Uh, you know, over 250 different startups in, in our community have raised over $200 million uh, across 20 different accelerator programs uh, connected to our network. Uh, and from there, there's, uh, of, course, of course, PhilVC, which is a, a way to connect um, startups in our ecosystem to capital uh, to be able to fundraise for late, later rounds. So this is a, a phenomenal um, uh, network to be able to start new Web3 startups. Uh, and you know, here's another way of visualizing the same kind of model where you know, we're tuning for this um, uh, pipeline to be able to support many builders around uh, this ecosystem to be able to go from early experimentation with ideas to validate their, their products, to start their startups, get traction and, and grow the business. Uh, so come join the community. Uh, there's a ton of different um, uh, Cloudflare events uh, around the world. Uh, right now, we're having Phil Hong Kong uh, right here uh, through this week. Uh, so check out the, the schedule. Um, you can uh, go, go to the website um, and uh, you can yeah check the schedule there. Um, there's lots of stuff going on um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and there's DStore HK, which is a, a specific event for Cloudflare storage providers. Um, and you're, if you're interested in that, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, so again, the Falcon Metric plan is to build the world's largest decentralized storage network, then to onboard and safeguard humanity's data, and then to bring computation to the data to enable web scale apps. We've launched the FEM in the last um, month. We've seen an enormous amount of growth uh, just in the last 30 days. It's amazing to see the, the community um, adopting FEM, building applications, deploying them to the network and growing, uh, and look forward to a super awesome uh, 2023 and 2024. All right, thanks so much and see you around.